The Romans called them gladiators, we call them football players, but they seem to serve much the same purpose. Whether it's Aussie rules or rugby league, union or soccer, each weekend hundreds of thousands of us go out to the local version of the Colosseum to watch our champions battered out to the death. The rougher, the better. Yet on Monday, we're able to wash our hands of it all and to talk in pious terms about how the game is getting too violent. The players are left with blood on their hands. For the last six weeks, we've been following one Sydney team, Wests, in its bid for the championship. We've been to places where few outsiders have ever been allowed before, like the dressing room before the game, and the psyching up that turns ordinary men into bone-crunching champions. Wests have the reputation of being the toughest of a pretty tough lot. But we found something more than that, a team who feel very keenly that they represent all of the ambitions and all of the frustrations of the working-class battler. And a coach, Roy Masters, who, like Melbourne's Ron Barassi, understands what it takes to motivate these gladiators. If you think it gets rough on the football field, have a look at what goes on before the game. This is what happens. Dressing room aggression. It's nothing like the psychiatrist's couch, but Coach Roy Masters is the super psych. His job is to motivate, and anything goes. And then people will say that was their finest hour. Then they'll know what a club is made of and what men are made of. Masters hammers home what he calls the team's self-image. Western suburbs, society's underdogs, victimised by everyone. Winning against those odds is the impossible dream. And these men are the impossible dreamers. Blokes with nicknames like Sloth, Snake, Dallas, Bloodnut and Spider. Wests are known as the toughest in a tough game. To some, they're the thugs of football. But that's not the way that 60 Minutes found them. We've got to reach that unreachable star. We've got to fight and wrong. We talk about uh, rugby league being a contact sport. I think it's a collision sport. I think dancing's a contact sport. I feel that I've got to get them into a fairly aggressive state. If we lose our aggression, we're gone. And uh, that's legal aggression, I mean. But under no circumstances do I want you to lose your natural aggression today because our natural aggression is the thing which has stuck with us over the last two years. You hit them two in a tackle, legal stuff, very, very hard. They'll come back with all the other stuff, but don't worry about it. You just keep going. But as soon as you start not moving up in the line, as soon as you start <coughs> wondering what all this is about, and they're hitting us and they're getting away with it, that's when we're going to start to lose this game today. And that's the first thing. I don't care what, whatever's been said in papers or whatever speculation's gone on around the place, you are going to play with your natural aggression today of two in every tackle and hitting extremely hard, right? The thing I admire about you is just, just, the, just looking at you, Ronnie Broderick. The fact that you probably hate the opposition more than any man in this whole team hates the opposition. But what has been missing in the last two or three games is, is that hatred is not coming out on the field. It's not shown in those long, hard, damaging runs and really hitting the black hard and tackles. Your mind wants you to hate, but your body's not hating them. Don't forget you've got to hit these bastards nice and hard. Don't forget that. Don't ever lose your natural aggression because it's just as though they've somebody's burnt your bloody house down or taken your job away from you. Is that something that they've all tried to take away from us, our aggression? And as soon as they take our aggression away from us, we're... Call it aggression, call it violence. It's an image that has cost them dearly. Three of their best players sent off and suspended for weeks. The football press gleefully said that was the end for the Magpies. But I've done as much as I can to get you here. But they'd forgotten Roy Masters, the motivator. 
he seized upon this to again drive home the self-image of the underdogs up against it. We get the muddy fruits of victory or we suffer the bitterness of defeat. It's just turn up and turn the stand a little bit higher than it's been ever since you've been wearing football boots. Masters begins his psych-up session two hours before the match, developing his favourite theme, the battlers, working class, against the silver tails, the wealthy mob. It's old-fashioned class warfare. They didn't go to Oberon. They didn't pay money out of their own bloody pockets to go up into the wilderness. They sat around bloody beaches and bars around bloody Palm Beach and took waves in while we were slogging it out up there at bloody Oberon trying to get the first image together. The team that's going to have to fight all the way. Well, today is our, absolutely our last chance. And it's because of Abron and because of a lot of things that have happened to us this year that we've just got to succeed. Are we so second class that we're not supposed to have fright? Or does that, does that comment mean in some other way that West are so low and so subhuman form of bloody species that <coughs> you lose all pride when they beat you? Roy Master's self-image is based here, in Sydney's industrial western suburbs, a community that feels itself isolated, a kind of suburban ghetto. We live in basically a, an industrial area, and uh, it's, it's uh, not the, the brick veneer set, it's, you know, it's the fibro set and uh, the weatherboard set. Uh, that is the sort of area from which we come, but it gives us comfort. That's what that song's about. The tension and the tempo pick up. Dave Dittman is the team's conditioner, physical and mental. Forget all the pretty stuff. You won't find this locker room language in any psychology textbook. It would make a bullocky blush. But in here, it helps create the mood. What about the rough language? What role does that language play? It's a difficult question, that really. Uh, the, the rough language is probably symptomatic of, of, of the way we are, of, of just being people who are fairly coarse and obtruse and, and, uh, and fairly rough, I suppose. It's just symptomatic with, with everything. A travel writer recently in Japan described the mood in which the people of Kyoto, which is somewhat west of the normal typhoon track, awaited one typhoon. And an eerie, ominous silence prevails. But here, the language is different. Roy Masters teaches high school economics. His formal training includes psychology. In the classroom, again, He's the motivator, the master of mood, as he always is. But why do grown men subject themselves to what amounts to brainwashing? My brain often says, well, I don't necessarily agree with that, but it's still just such an overwhelming kind of experience that you just get caught up in it. Yeah, we were up there and we were going to... Warren Boland has a university degree. He also makes religious programs for a Sydney radio station. Well, I don't know if it's necessary. I don't know if I nece necessarily agree with it. And I can see the effects of it as well. So um, I started to agree with it. it certainly has an effect. Just come in. No, no, come in. You want to have a look at your hand. You want to sign it? Go and sign it. Come and sign your hand. Tommy Radonikus, Tom Terrific, the team captain, also sees the effects, but in another way, from his adoring fans. This is the public approval for his football aggression, his driving self-motivation. Okay. Yeah, at the end of the season, eh? No, love, no. It'll be off in two weeks. I'm going to chop it off. Okay. Okay, okay girls. See you later. It's, it's uh, very important to um, for a player to, player to be self-motivated also because a coach can only do uh, a certain amount. It's up then to the individual to do, to do his own self-motivation. There are players in the team, for example, the extremely bright ones who, uh, well, perceptive ones, who sort of say to me from time to time, Roy, I know you're, uh, you go on with this, but uh, I make myself believe it. <laughs> I'm starting to believe some of these things I say myself. The approval comes in cold cash for this man, butcher John Dorothy. He's the football brains of the team. But to him, a football game is something more primitive. It's law of the jungle. So two animals that are after the one thing in life, and uh, to live, you know, they've got to knock each other out.
Roy Masters flies never away. lets up, even at a backyard barbie with the wives and the girlfriends. <laughs> the talk is football, but underlying it all is the self-image. He said to me, I read the paper, I'm not sure which paper, but I read the paper, and it had, I, s I reckon, you know, a fairly good article, a fairly big article on the game, West Manly and West, and I reckon there was a paragraph and a half on the football. Mm. That's all up the on the Monday, and, it was, and uh, I'm, no, I'm not sure which paper it was. And we scored, um, we scored two of the most spectacular tries that day. I'd, Jack, remember that day against Manly? We scored two of the best tries you've ever seen in your life. I can't go up and just job B, because B's done something to him, and... It's all sorted out uh, over, you know, like kids in the playground. It's all over and done within a minute. Uh, but rather, I'll get my own back on him in a, in a subtle, devious, snide way. And that's the point he's making. And it's, it's this. Yeah, well, we, want, no, we go out there and play <laughs> man for man. And I've got to grind that bloke in the ground. Mm. And I've got to beat him. I go out there to beat the bloke on planning. <laughs> it's called Search and Destroy. A motivation movie, not with John Wayne and the Marines, but with football players. In fact, American gridiron players, with all the razzle-dazzle and the padding that our gladiators would normally laugh at, but not today. Get the man. This is the man I want to get. I wouldn't use hypnosis, because I find that hypnosis would probably be more successful with a team such as Cronulla or Canterbury or or even manly, because hypnosis tends to relax players and, and the sound of waves beating against the shore and things like that. You know, the blokes from western suburbs have got no money. Some of you have got money and the rest of you want it for next year. But if hypnosis is out, music is in. Music to motivate men. And oddly enough, his pet theme is Exodus. Masters equates the Jewish struggle with western suburbs. Backs to the wall, downtrodden, victimised, and always fighting for survival. It's just designed to get the adrenaline pumping a little bit faster, and um, it's also it's designed to help them to control themselves a little bit. They've got to be able to cop one right across the, the mouth and uh, be, be willing to tolerate it. Roy Masters knows that he must pitch his players into a state of controlled fury. But he also knows that outside in the arena, the controls may disappear. I think that it's uh, a little bit like the, the Roman days, uh, but I think it's a part of, of people's uh, inventing their emotions by watching something that uh, perhaps some of them may like to do themselves. <laughs> Sometimes it gets out of hand. The players have to be pulled apart. So once again, the gladiators go into battle. On Monday morning, we'll all talk about how the game is too violent. But next weekend, we'll call for blood and probably get it. At least the Romans were a bit more honest. Altogether, we spent six weeks with Wests, a team that had some of their top players disqualified for alleged violence. And we watched them succeed against all the predictions winning game after game to approach the Premiership against all of the odds. Last week, they lost. And this was to be our last look at the Gladiators. Uh -huh.